Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Go Beyond Fitness Developing for Samsung Gear Sport webinar. I'm Gabby Rojas from the developer support team here at, at Samsung in Mountain View. So before we get started, I just want to go through a quick uh, housekeeping items. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A box and we will answer at the end of, of, the, of the session. If you're having any issues with the tool, uh, you cannot hear us, you cannot see me, you cannot see the slides, also send us a message and we will try to help you as soon as possible. Uh, this session is being recorded and we will be sharing also the presentation slides. You can access them through our website, the Samsung Developer Program. And please uh, provide your feedback. You will see a survey at the end of the, uh, of the session. And please let us know what you think, uh, any other topic that you're interested to learn about, or how can we improve these webinars. We are looking for, for feedback always, so please let us know. OK, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to talk today about uh, Gear Sport. The webinar is Go Beyond Fitness Developing for Samsung Gear Sport. And it's going to be really interesting. So as I mentioned, we are based in Mountain View, California. We are a developer support team here helping developers in their Android and Tyson projects. We work with the Samsung Android SDKs, uh, Tyson wearables SDKs, uh, watch face editor tool. We also have themes. We help you during the submission and then development of your app. And basically, you just need to register to Samsung Developer Program. It's free, and you can access uh, different benefits, which include this uh, technical support, get one-on-one -on -one support for, for any issue that you might have when you're doing the integration and, and creating apps. Uh, the, the link, you can see it in the slide. Uh, submit a ticket, let us know how we can help you. If you also want to submit for a promotion request for your content, you think you have great content, please reach out to us, and we will be happy to help you. We have another upcoming webinar that I believe is really interesting, the developer, the gu developer guide to the new Samsung Gear Sport. That's going to be focused mostly in design and the new Tyson 3.0 API. So I recommend you check it out. It's going to be next week. And we also have a lot of past webinars available in our website. We have the videos, the slides. Uh, some of them have uh, development guides and sample applications. So take a look at it. And I hope you enjoy them as well. OK, well, we can get started. I want to introduce you to David. He will be taking it from here. David, I'll leave it up to you. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Gabby. So um, you know, as Gabby mentioned, uh, so my name is David Eng. I'm with the Samsung America Wearables product team. Um, and the focus of this webinar is uh, to give you guys the most up-to-date product information on our gear portfolio. So uh, in particular, we just announced a new product. It's called Gear Sport. Uh, it'll be available for all developers platform to work on very shortly. And uh, it's a great complement to our existing portfolio, uh, which includes Gear S3 and Gear S2. Um, so I want to walk you through a couple of the latest trends, consumer trends, industry trends, and then we'll get into some of the product details. Um, at the end, uh, we'll have some time for Q&A, and then also uh, I'd love to show you a, a couple of demos on the watch. So with that said, uh, so what you're kind of looking at right now is uh, the latest industry forecast for wearables. Um, on the left-hand side, that's the view from IDC, and uh, you'll notice the smartwatches, which is where Gear S3 and Gear Sport are a part of, uh, has seen a lot of growth over the last couple of years. So 2015. Um, was a big year for us at Samsung that, you know, that's when we launched the Gear S2 with its uh, award-winning rotating bezel design um, and was received by the consumers of the media with uh, uh, a lot of great praise and accolades. So, and then we built on that, um, kind of continuing to grow the market, which brings us up to the uh, latest data in 2017. So I think one other thing I want to note on this data, besides obviously that the, the uh, risk wearables categories are, are really strong growth areas is that in about 2019, um, according to this uh, analysis, we're about to see an inflection point where the smartwatches are going to start to take over for the fitness bands. Um, and a little bit, uh, you know, what you, we can look into that is that the history of smartwatches is really born out of this idea of fitness. And the consumers, um, you know, wanting to track their health and fitness better 
uh, through biometric sensing on their wrist. Now, you know, five years ago, the technology was pretty simple and there really wasn't a lot you could do on your wrist. But nowadays, um, you know, the, the market and the options are, uh, they do a lot more for you. So you can do things like more advanced communication um, and you can obviously do things like more advanced fitness, sensor tracking, better accuracy, et cetera. So uh, kind of what you can read into that trend is in 2019 where the volume starts to take over in smartwatches is that consumers are looking for devices that can do more for them. Uh, and uh, again, Samsung has been a leader in that space. We have the number one Android compatible smartwatch on the market today. Um, you know, and that's uh, with the Gear S3 and with the Gear S2 available. And also uh, we have another product, uh, a smart fitness band called the Gear Fit 2 Pro, which we recently just launched last Friday. Um, so yeah, so that's a real quick look at the, the market. Um, on the right hand side, just, uh, you know, some other data that supports really the growth trend, looking at the U.S. wearables install base. Uh, so we saw about 60% growth in smartwatches from 2017 to 2018. Um, and again, we expect that trend to continue. Um, and then, all right, so one slide on consumer trends that I do want to show you before we get into the product details. Um, and then again, this just kind of speaks to the, the, the use cases that we have available now on the smartwatches. So 60% of users now are wearing their smartwatches daily, and then 80% of them are wearing them weekly, uh, which is a huge improvement again from a few years ago. And uh, a lot of that attribution is because you can actually do a lot more with them. So if you look on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see some of those activities. Now, again, that, that history and fitness tracking, still 92% of daily use um, is coming from fitness tracking category, but closely behind that, you're starting to see things like communication, uh, so this is led by technologies, you know, like our Gear S3, which offers LTE connected standalone capabilities, uh, but just simple things like, you know, answering calls, checking texts, um, keeping up with social media, and then your your news and entertainment. So things like um, checking the weather is one of the, the most used things that we see on the smartwatches. Controlling music is very closely behind that, checking sports scores. Uh, and then finally, the area which is, uh, is, is still kind of ripe for a lot of development is this area of utilities. So things like mobile payment solutions and Samsung things, uh, uh, Samsung, mobile payment like Samsung uh, Pay. Uh, home control, so that's things like Samsung Connect where we uh, you know, uh, acquired a company called Smart Things a few years back and we're really kind of tying together those smart home uh, devices into one ecosystem. Um, and then other things like reminders. But um, the point is, is there's, there really is just kind of a multitude of things that people are doing on SmartWatch nowadays. It's not just one or the other. Um, and so our Gear Sport, which I'll introduce you to, will, will kind of help with that. Okay, so getting right into Gear Sport. So coming this fall, 2017, uh, we made the announcement for this product back at EFA Berlin a couple weeks ago. Um, and the theme for Gear Sport is really going beyond fitness. Uh, so as I mentioned before, you know, customers in the wrist wearable space are looking for devices that can really kind of take them to the next level. And through a compelling set of features, um, you know, Gear Sport is going to be a big part of that. So we'll talk a little bit more of the four key features of Gear Sport, those being swim readiness, advanced fitness coaching, smart assistant or smart watch capabilities. Um, and then we'll go through a, a little bit more on the design elements. All right, so first of all, swim readiness is pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, but uh, some of the details behind that is that it's 5 ATM, which means that it can go up to 50 meters, 55 atmospheric pressures or 50 meters of water resistance. Um, and more than just durability, we're actually uh, offering the capability to track swimming through our native S Health uh, fitness application, then also through our partnership with Speedo, uh, who's launching their wearable di digital platform with us on Fit2 Pro and then in Gear Sport, which we're here to talk about today. Um, what the, one other thing to note on the swim readiness that's really a kind of a key differentiator for us is the ability uh, to have a resistance against salt water. Uh, so that's a, an added level of testing that Samsung's gone through, um, which um, you know also makes it great for stories and, and functions that are in the ocean. You know, you can think like kind of surf tracking applications or water temperature. Um, so that's just an added benefit there. And then one other thing I'll mention in terms of durability, um, since we're talking about things like uh, you know, water resistance is the Gear Sport is also uh, military grade certified. So we use a certification, standard certification A10G, um, and that includes things like, you know, altitude tested. So these things are great for jumping out of planes, 
Uh, it also does heat and cold resistance, so you know boiling water temperatures down to freezing cold temperatures, uh, as well as scratch resistance that's provided by our, our great partner that's over at Corning Glass, who've uh, coated our, our glass with Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So really dur durable device and, and also obviously great for, for taking on a swim. Uh, the next thing I'll mention is in terms of advancements in fitness coaching. So up until this point, you know, our Samsung smartwatches have been really focused on how can we deliver a great experience and a robust experience uh, tracking calorie burn, which is obviously the critical component, um, you know, for, for an exercise program. Uh, what we're layering onto that and what we're going to be focusing on with Gear Sport is calorie intake. So, uh, uh, you know, we're developing software uh, through our Samsung Health platform that's going to allow you to track the calories that go in. Um, also gives you the ability to do quick add just by like a quick turn in the bezel. You can actually uh, input calories directly onto the device. Um, and then what we're really excited about is there's actually watch faces and a widget option so that you can get a quick look at what your calories are for the day. So if you look at the, the option uh, on the left, that watch face it shows that you're 750 calories over for the day. Um, so it means that, you know, probably for dinner, you might want to have a light dinner and uh, you might want to hit the gym before you maybe have like a big breakfast or a big lunch. Um, but this is a critical component because I think that calorie in and that calorie out uh, is really is really kind of the comprehensive look that, that gets our consumers to be able to meet their fitness goals. All right, and uh, another thing that contributes to the improvements for fitness tracking, uh, we're adding capabilities with our Galaxy smartphones and then also with the TVs. So you can have a program running um, on your watch. It'll actually recommend to you certain programs based on your fitness needs, or you can just kind of choose them. So think like things like uh, weightlifting, things like uh, cardio or core. And, uh, we're going to have a bunch of different content provided from some partners over at Speedo, barterbuilding.com, uh, workout trainer, etc. So the idea is that you can um, you know, choose these programs and you can either show them on your phone or you can screen share them to your TV. But it's working uh, in conjunction with the Gear Sport to deliver real-time heart rate information and the ability to skip control, uh, get duration, time, and calories directly on your watch during that. So, um, it's really taking that again, going beyond fitness, taking that uh, fitness experience into like a, a home gym environment. Uh, another great feature is the fitness in the fitness coach is the the run coach. So um, when you go for a run now, not only will you get an audio guide, which would be able to tell you things like you know what your split times are, uh, what your average times are, what your heart rate was, how much time you have left, etc. Um, but we're taking that intelligence to the next level so that you can have a, a coached running experience. So the coach will let you actually walk you through like a warm-up period. Um, it'll walk you through your, your high intensity and your low intensity intervals um, and make sure you're on track to have a more productive workout. Okay, so then moving away from fitness and getting a little bit into the smart assistant features. So, um, you know, for the first time on any of our Gear Smart Watches, we're going to be introducing uh, the software Samsung Connect. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a technology that was born out of our acquisition of smart things. Um, and the uh, capab capability really is that you can take all of the devices, smart devices you have in your home. Um, you know, we do things with Samsung devices like home appliances and TVs, uh, you know, rigid, uh, rigid, sorry, um, oven ranges, and uh, also for washer dryers. But it also works with a multitude of devices that have been compatible with smart things. Um, so again, that technology is built into it. So the idea on the watch is that um, not that you're going to do a lot of complicated setup, but you'll do things like easy controls, like turn on and off the TV, set timers um, on some of the home appliances, and then be able to toggle between the different settings that you have set up in smart things, maybe home and away, uh, so you can kind of get the dashboard and monitor uh, your devices at home. Uh, and another really great technology that we're bringing down into this product from our Gear S3 is the Samsung Pay solution. So you know, this is a really great technology that uh, allows you to pay even if you don't have your phone with you. Um, it's a to secure tokenized payment solution that stores them on the uh, Gear Sport. And this will be the NFC only version. So it's um, different than the, the full featured version that we have on the Gear S3 and the, um, the smartphones. But it will give you access to all NFC enabled terminals. Um, so it still is a really great thing to have. Let's say you know you are out on a run and you want to leave your wallet behind and your phone behind. 
You can get advanced sensor capabilities like we talked about with the GPS and the heart rate monitoring and the fitness coaching. Um, but then you'll also have the ability to make payments. You know, let's say that you're kind of dehydrated and you want to run into the 7-Eleven and grab uh, a Gatorade. You know, you'll have the ability to make that payment directly from your watch. Um, so other great features that we're porting over from our Gear S3 uh, is our app ecosystem, which is uh, kind of like uh, why we're here today talking to you folks. So, um, you know, we have the Tizen platform available. It's launching Tizen 3.0. Um, it is backwards compatible uh, uh, with the Gear S3 applications that we've already launched. So right now we have about 31,000 watch faces and applications in the store. Um, about 80% of those are watch faces, and we'll talk a little bit in more detail on those in some of the coming slides. But um, I just want to highlight a couple of the really great experiences that have bubbled up through our owners' studies um, and that customers really appreciate. Uh, but things like Spotify. So, um, you know, we have a partnership with them where we're, we're offering an offline experience um, on the device. So you can actually take it and uh, uh, your music to go without having the phone and store the music directly on it. Um, other really successful applications that um, are part of that ecosystem, Uber, uh, people really love the ability to not take out their phone but order a taxi cab right from the wrist. ESPN, um, you know, just having a watch face that constantly shows your sports scores is really great. Um, of course, all of our fitness applications that I talked about in great length already. Um, and then simple things like checking the weather and, um, you know, other things like IoT home control, like Nest Thermostat, working with them directly and Hue light bulbs. So these are just a couple examples. And let's talk actually a little bit more um, about that ecosystem of watch faces now. So getting more into third party watch faces, the next slides, we're going to show you a couple examples of great watch faces that third party designers and developers um, made for our Galaxy App Store. So typically these watch faces that you're going to be seeing, um, they're between one and three dollars. Uh, so the revenue sharing program developers would retain 90% uh, of the net revenue. Um, as I mentioned earlier, watch face applications generate uh, an estimated 80% of all downloads from the Gear App Store. Um, there's also a free tool, it's called Gear Watch Face Designer. It's available at developers.samsung.com. And without any coding skills, designers can create amazing dynamic watch faces. You, know, you can have access to all the sensor information, things like uh, heart rate, battery, battery life, gyro, weather, step count, speed, uh, even things like adding cups of water or coffee to your day. So there's a bunch of different kind of tools in there that you can add to really kind of spice up your watch face. But we think this is a great opportunity for teams to create amazing content. Um, and of course, our consumers love it because these are great ways that they can kind of personalize their watch experience. So I'll walk through a couple of those and show you right here uh, some examples of, of some of the, uh, the more successful third party watch faces that we have. Uh, and again, we're showing these on the Gear S3, but these will also be compatible for the Gear Sport that we have upcoming. Um, so here's a really great example uh, where they're showing dual time. Um, they're also doing things like showcasing, um, you know, the ability to launch apps like things like weather, email, you know, even like a music player. Um, here's a really one, here's a great uh, example of a watch face that's kind of used a, a traditional watch design technology that looks like it's like kind of illuminated. So really cool, they call it hologram. And... Here's another example, just this more of a basic digital digital watch face, but also giving the ability to like little customization, uh, like colors and such that you can put on it. Um, so I think we have one more example of this, and then I'm going to entertain some questions about the watch faces. Yeah, so here here's an example of photo watch face. So uh, this this was really really popular when we launched, and I'm sure it's, it's still doing really well, but. Um, you know, having the ability to just kind of put photos that you want on your watch face doesn't really get more personal than that. All right, so I have a question that came in uh, from Gabby. I'm going to uh, get to this in a second. Oh, and also first, I want to clarify. I'm sorry if uh, I misspoke earlier, but the revenue sharing is 70% uh, net revenue with for the developer, 70%. Uh, so I do apologize if I misspoke earlier. So the question is, I want to know about the Gear Sports ability to work as a controller for the Gear VR 
that was mentioned in the press release. Ah, great question. Uh, so this software actually uh, it's still being developed. So like I said, this device is coming this fall. So uh, unfortunately, I haven't uh, gotten a whole lot of hands-on time with it, but I will kind of share with you the, the plan and the scope of it. So as far as the Gear VR controller, the planned uh, capabilities are that you can control the menus. Um, so think of it you know, as a replacement on the VR for the touch controls. Um, and you'll be able to rotate the, the bezel on the outside to go through those menus and you'll be able to uh, tap to make selections. And then you can even use the back button on the watch um, to get you back through the menu structure. So it's really meant to be a replacement and a more convenient for the side of the, the VR. So I hope that helps answer the question. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a demo of that today because, again, the, the software was is still a little bit too early. Um, but we hope to, to have that available for you and it is planned as part of the launch package. Okay. So I'm going to keep moving through these. We've got a couple more slides and then we can start getting some more Q&A and demos. Let's see here. Paul looks at some of the, the watch bases that people have designed out there. Okay, uh, and so then also going into the design is obviously the casing itself, um, but we're launching this in uh, two available colors. Colors It'll be available in black, and it'll also be available in blue. Um, one thing to note is the 42 millimeter casing. So uh, with Gear S3, you know, that's really kind of Samsung's kitchen sink in terms of having all the feature capabilities, has LTE. Uh, which I will point out at this point, this does not offer an LTE capability. Gear Sport is going to be Bluetooth paired only. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's in a 42 millimeter casing, which is consistent with you know traditional watches, the most popular sizes. So we feel that this kind of uh, reaches a broader audience in terms of uh, style and size preference. And another cool thing about the design is that we're going to offer it with standard. Uh, watch bands, so just like the Gear S3, that one's 22 millimeter. This will be 20 millimeter standard watch bands, and uh, we're actually going to be launching a collection of watch bands that are made by Samsung. Uh, now, of course, you can go out to the marketplace, Amazon.com, whatever, and you can find uh, you know literally thousands of different watch bands out there. Uh, but if you want something that's made specifically for Samsung, all the watch faces that I'm showing you right here are actually going to have um, preloaded watch faces that are set up to match those already. So. Um, one of my favorites in these is the, the hybrid sport. So this was a really cool concept um, that I think comes to life on, on the gear sport. But, you know, as I mentioned, it goes beyond fitness. And by going beyond fitness, you know, you want to have a watch band that will take you from the gym into the office or at home at night. So with this one, it has a, a silicon base on the bottom that goes up along the edges. And then on the top, it has a really nice leather um, that's actually embedded and, and sewn into it. So. What you do is you get kind of like a, a, a nice look that's very casual and not sport focused, um, but also you don't have to worry about it getting really sweaty when you go to the gym and, and you know being able to rinse it off really quickly if it does kind of collect sweat over time. All right, uh, so I'm just going to wrap up right there. This is going to be my last slide, and then we're going to go through some demonstrations. So uh, swim readiness, the big point there is 5 ATM swim tracking. Um, in terms of fitness coaching, you know, we're adding the ability to do total calorie management. Um, it also obviously still includes the um, heart rate monitoring for continuous heart rate tracking and also onboard GPS for, you know, getting accurate uh, pacing and also GPS mapping. Adding the smart capabilities through our smart assistant technologies, primarily Samsung Connect and Samsung Pay, as well as our ecosystem of partners like you. Um, developing over 31,000 apps and watch faces. Uh, and then finally, our design, which uh, of course is really going to be a better demonstration once I show you a little bit about what that looks like. But the components there being you know, a really popular 42 millimeter casing and having the ability to uh, dress it up with different standard 20, 20 millimeter watch bands. All right, so I'm going to pause right there. Uh, if no questions, I'm going to kind of dive right into the demonstrations. And uh, let me know if you guys want to see anything on the watch or if you want to, uh, you know, ask any questions about what you're seeing on there. So give me a minute here. I'm going to adjust uh, the webcam so we can get a better look. Okay. So let me get this focused. I'm going to 
I'm going to do something really quick. I'm going to turn down the brightness here because I think it's a little too much for the camera to pick up. Yeah, that's much better. Oh, and getting a question in, so I'm going to stop for a second here. Um, so the question is, is the Gear Sport the same charging dock as the S3 and previous models? So the answer to that is the S3 it's actually compatible with. Um, it does come with a slightly smaller docking station uh, that's better fit for the S2, as I mentioned. But um, you know, it is backwards compatible. So if you have the Gear S3 and you're thinking about getting the second one, uh, you could like leave one at home and, and one at the office. Uh, another question that came in, are there any enterprise applications? So that's a really great question. Um, so, um, you know, just as, as being in this category for a while and, and kind of developing the different use cases, uh, enterprise to me has really been um, kind of a very natural fit for wearable devices, right? Like if you think about healthcare, healthcare monitoring, um, and then also, if you think of on-the-job tools, like being able to uh, know whereabouts, check schedules, um, it's been really important. So we actually have a whole other division at Samsung that's focused on delivering. Um, oh, sorry. Great. Sorry about that. Uh, so we, we actually have a whole division at Samsung that, that's focused on delivering um, enterprise solutions. So if you have specific uh, applications, you know, go ahead and, and write those to the developer relations team. Gabby can get you the best way to get in touch with them. Um, and we can definitely put you in touch with the right people. But um, so yeah, to give you some examples, you know, Samsung's been doing exciting things with healthcare. So we have some pilot programs running right now uh, with healthcare facilities around the country. Um, and then, uh, then also again, like uh, you know, we have a, a pilot program that we ran with a, an airport. We won't give away the specifics, but the idea was that you know, um, as people change their shifts and are needed at different parts of the airport security, uh, you know, they can get an easy alert on their wrist on where to go, and uh, it really helps kind of with the uh, logistics. I'll call it of on the job. So absolutely, a ton of enterprise applications, um, and we also do uh, pilot programs with businesses that are looking for. You know, fitness improvements like tracking your steps to help keep a healthy workforce, and and uh, we have technologies available and APIs where you can use them for access to so secure access. Uh, you know, as a as a mode of entry through um, secure locks and, and doors and such. Okay, uh, I did get another question. So, is the watch easy to open up in case I would need to replace the battery due to long term usage? Uh, so it is not. So we don't uh, warranty the devices for uh, removing. So it is a little bit of a complicated process, kind of like modern smartphones these days. So we have authorized service centers across the country um, that would help you if you did have some sort of a battery wear issue. Um, so this watch, the, the Gear S3 uh, is rated at three days, and the Gear Sport is going to be rated at three to four days battery life. Um, so it is a, a good long battery, and uh, we do. It does also come with a standard one-year parts and labor warranty. So if you do start to see, you know, some heavy battery degradation during that lifetime, uh, our call centers are there to evaluate that and take a look for you. Okay. All right, great. So I think I'm going to pause there on the questions, get through a couple of these demos. Let's move the camera back down here. Okay. So this is the Gear Sport. So you see this, I kind of have this like digital watch face chosen here. Uh, it also has the ability to do always on watch face. It's a little hard to see in the, the video, but basically like, you know, even if you cover this up or if you, you don't engage with it, you can see there's like kind of a dimmer version of it and still very battery efficient. Um, that's also a feature you can enable as part of the, um, uh, the watch face uh, third party development. So, you know, you can have a, a watch face that dims out and gives you that look. And the reason it goes off, actually, is uh, because I'm not wearing it on my wrist right now. So it actually checks to see if there's a heart rate there. Otherwise, it goes into battery conservation and assumes that you have it sitting on the desk. Um, so I want to show you the two designs, first of all. So this is the, the black, and this is the blue. So they're very subtle in the sense that uh, the blue is kind of like more of a midnight, like deep navy. So it's really meant to pop for people who are into that. It's a very uh, 
on trend color this fashion season. Um, so that's why we went with that. But of course, the black uh, also goes with a lot of different strap colors and such. So you can, you know, right up here, you can see these are just standard 20 millimeter attachments. You can just pop those on and off. Um, I also want to show you really quickly the size as it compares to Gear S3. So this is the Gear S3 that we launched last year. And then this is the, the Gear Sport. So let me see if I can make it a little easier for you guys to see both side by side. There you go. But, um, you know, significant size difference. And whereas Gear S3, it's, it's definitely an on-trend size to have the bigger watches nowadays. You know, a lot of people just want the, uh, the more standard size fitting that you can get from a Gear Sport. So again, this is kind of addressing that particular customer. Okay, so I mentioned that it's 5 ATM waterproof. Um, I didn't bring less water to dunk, dunk it in for the demo, but I hope you guys can just trust me out on that. But it is fully certified and tested uh, from our third party to make sure that it is uh, swim ready and swim proof. Um, I'll show you a little bit about some of the functionality. So when you hit the bottom button, that'll take you into your app tray. So the app tray will let you, if you spin the watch, you can swim through the different, you can spin through the different applications that you have on there, um, as well as the preloaded Samsung services. So this is a really cool, cool way to get around. Um, nobody in the smartwatch space has been able to replicate this experience. Um, and like I said, when we launched the rotating bezel on the Gear S2, it was uh, met with a, a lot of acclaim and, and even a couple of awards. So we're really excited to be the only vendor that's offering that. Um, so like I mentioned, the bottom button is kind of like the home button. And then the spin is how you get through the different apps. Uh, if you rotate, if you rotate to the right, this will give you your widgets. These are also um, things that uh, we make available as an API to develop against. But you can have these great widget experience. I think you can hold up to maybe 12 of them at a time. Uh, you can add more and make them as part of your app download package. Um, but these are really great because you don't even need to go on the app tray to open it up. You can have them right there and available for you um, at the quick flip of the wrist. Now, if you go the other direction, this is where you get into, um, you'll have different notifications that you have. Like if you have uh, apps that come in, you want to reply directly to them, uh, you can do that uh, directly on the watch right there. OK, and then the last thing I want to show you is I'll show you a quick demo on the fitness application. So um, you get into this. So this is our Samsung Health application, um, and it's going to give you you know, a look of your calories like we talked about, your floor is climbed, um, how much water you've had, how much caffeine you've had. And you can do things like challenges if you want. So it's got this together feature uh, where you can actually challenge other people that use S Health. But let me get you into the workout application. So if you go into the workout, you just hit workout right like that. Let's say you want to do running. Uh, but if you didn't want to do running, it supports a ton of different stuff like lunges, crunches, uh, elliptical trainer. Um, it does things like, you know, Pilates, yoga, rowing machine. We even have this other really great new feature called Other Workout. And what Other Workout is, basically any time for more than 10 minutes, um, you're, you're moving your arms and your legs. It recognizes that. And it'll give you credit um, for those calorie burns is working out. And it'll actually, after 10 minutes, it'll automatically detect that. But you can manually start it, too, if, if you want. But for the example, let me go back into the running tool. So I'm going to go into the running tool. Uh, I'm actually going to check. You can set yourself a target, you know, whether you want to track, you want to have the pace setter that we talked about with the coaching. You can do a typical time distance uh, or even a calorie burn metric. Uh, you can toggle back and forth between GPS settings, um, auto pause settings, and then the guide intervals that you want, you can customize. And then what you do is you just hit start, give you a quick countdown. Uh, and then you'd be in your 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 running uh, mode. So, you know, in the default mode, it shows you duration and heart rate, but you can actually get different looks here. So, oops, sorry, uh, it'll give you different looks. Like if you want, you know, to have your your uh, heart rate up front and center, you can look at that. Your distance front and center, it'll give you that. And it actually also has it built into it. Uh, a music player. So if you have your phone with you and you have, or if you have music copied over onto it and stored as MP3s, uh, you don't even need to walk out of the app to be able to do that. So then you would click finish, you would save your workout, uh, and then you get this readout showing your heart rate. Um, also, if we had gone anywhere and the GPS had picked it up, it would actually show you a map of where you went on your workout. 
Okay, so a couple more questions that came in. Take a break from the demos there. Okay, so can you please show how to change the watch face to personalize on the gear? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Second here. Uh, so this is this is the watch face that I have currently set. Let's say that I wanted to personalize that with something else. What I would do is I would hold it down, and then you just rotate the bezel, and then this would be where your pre-installed, as well as any sort of downloaded watch faces, would show up. It also has a direct link to the Galaxy App Store, uh, you know, where you can actually look here and you can see some of the top downloaded watch faces and applications, and you can download it actually directly from their watch. So I think this is probably not populated with anything except test data right now, but uh, since this isn't launched. But to give you an example, you know, you have things like the Under Armour applications, uh, some tools, you know, GPS. But this is a great way for customers to download the applications too, is right from that. Uh, we also have some other tools that I'll show you real quickly. So, you know, when you do go to the watch face that you like, let's say, you know, you're into this one, you can actually go to the Customize button. And by rotating the bezel, you can actually change the colors of the watch. So there's different features in there that you can enable. Um, again, this is in that watch designer tool as well. So from a third-party development perspective, you can definitely uh, find kind of cool ways to customize, just like you do with us. So, OK, great. Uh, I hope that helps answer that question. And then I just want to give, for those of you who haven't had a chance to get into the, uh, the App Store, I want to show you really quickly what that looks like uh, on the phone. So the way that you'd get to it, so here I have my, this is my Galaxy S8, um, and I would open the Samsung Gear application. This is what's paired to, paired to my watch. And then um, you know, right from here, you can go to Suggested Watch Faces, or you can go to Suggested Apps. And this will take you directly to the watch store. See that load up right here? And this is kind of the entry page for the Gear Watch Store. Um, obviously, watch faces are very popular, so you can see a lot of those um, on the home page. But you also have like a category look here. So you can define it as like health and fitness. Um, or if you have things like finance applications, those would all go into those different categories. You can sort it by top. So that top downloaded applications, uh, and then you can you know sort it by just watch faces because again these account for approximately eighty percent of all the downloads for gear. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, this is what it looks like. So let's say I wanted this watch face, I could click on that, and then here it is. So this watch face is a dollar ninety nine. You can click on it. Um, click OK. So I'm not going to go through this whole thing right now, but uh, basically what it would do is, uh, you know, first time if you have it linked to your Samsung account, it's already got the billing information saved in there. Uh, but then I would click on this Accept. And then I would put in my password. Uh, and then I would download the application. And then it would show would show up in that list. Okay. All right, so I want to pause there. Uh, that was about what we had in terms of presentation. I will hand it back to Gabby for uh, to wrap things up in a minute here. But want to give anybody, if there's any other last minute questions or anything that you came up during the presentation you wanted more clarity on, uh, now would be the time. Uh, so quick correction, the customized style option is not available in the GWTT tool, uh, but there are some customization options available, if I believe. Um, just getting a quick correction here from our technical team. So yeah, there is there is a different a bunch of stuff that you can uh, you can change out, and it does. And it does support wireless charging. Um, I think that was an answer to somebody's question out there that they asked.
All right, so one question we just got, would apps be portable between Gear S3 and the new Gear Sport? Uh, and the answer is yes. So um, yeah, we did testing on that. We looked at the, so if you have an existing Gear S3 app, um, I think that there was, there was a very, very small percentage of applications that were running into compatibility issues, like less than 1%. Um, and to be honest, I don't have the technical details with me today on that. Um, but um, in general, the Gear S3 applications will be forward compatible with the Gear Sport. I have a Nexus 5X. Would I be able to use all the features of the watch? Uh, yes. So there are a couple things. So again, like I think it's like 95%. So um, in terms of Android compatible, we support all Android compatible phones 4.4 and above. Um, and we do do frequent testing on the more popular models and occasionally do th things do come up. So you can obviously submit that uh, as a ticket if you find an issue with a, a Android 4.4 phone, some sort of bug. Um, but generally speaking, they do. Um, in terms of features that are different from the Nexus and say one of our Samsung flagship phones, um, there is one. So um, the way that the Android stack is set up, you can't uh, copy pre-saved Wi-Fi settings over directly to your watch. You need to, to input those. So if you have a Galaxy phone, in other words, all of your Wi-Fi profiles that you have saved on your Galaxy phone will automatically port over to the watch. If you have a non-Samsung phone, like the Nexus 5X, um, you would need to actually input those just once, but you would need to input your password for the first time that you connect to Wi-Fi. Um, Geez, off the top of my head, I believe that's the only difference that we have. Uh, you know, the compatibility over the last couple of years has kind of gotten to the point where it's almost the same. It's just uh, kind of like little stuff like that that has it fully ported over from Android. Uh, does the Gear Sport run Tizen 3.0? Uh, yes, it does. So it has available the features of Gear Tizen 3.0. Will this be available for hands-on at Samsung Developers Conference next month? Uh, that's a great question. I actually haven't seen the floor plan for that. Um, you know, that's something that I can run back to the team, and we can definitely get you an answer for that. Um, I would say most likely, um, but yeah, to to answer your question, I can't really confirm that at this time. But that's something maybe we can post as a follow-up question. All right, so I think that's it for the for the Q and A right now. I really appreciate you guys' time, and uh, you know I hope you really enjoyed the the features of the Gear Sport. Um, you know I'm always available to the developer team if questions come up. Uh, you know even outside of this, so feel free to shoot them a message, and and we can definitely get back to you. Um, but yeah, looking forward to all you guys' great apps, and and I'm gonna pass this back to Gabby to wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, that was pretty good. So basically, just next steps. Uh, as David had mentioned, if you have any question, you want to follow up, uh, we receive a little bit more of technical questions, we can follow up with you via our ticketing system. Please join our Samsung Developer Program if you have any other kind of query or uh, you're, you need our help to, to uh, help you in your integration or using the SDKs. As I mentioned before, we're going to have an, another webinar next week still covering the gear sport mostly focusing on the ux and then 3.0 uh, tyson uh, features and if you have a uh, interested in any other topics well we also have past webinars uh, please check our library uh, very interesting topics so for you to review and as david mentioned we are having a samsung developer conference in october there are going to be multiple teams not only wearables uh, we know the gear watch designer tool team is going to be there on site so it's very good opportunity to meet them, to start uh, looking at the opportunities to create your own watch faces. We're also going to have uh, in approaches, uh, TV, uh, all the different areas uh, that Samsung is, is uh, innovating. So we hope to see you there. And thank you so much for your time. <laughs>